Welcome back. Uncle Sam welcomed me into the ranks of the U.S. Army at the same time that they had just decommissioned the M14 as the official service rifle and replaced it with the M16 as the service rifle. So I never had an opportunity to shoot the M14 in, in the Army, and I never had an opportunity to actually shoot one subsequent to that. So, uh, and I had many times, you know, examined them. Uh, we, used to, we used to actually store a uh, national match uh, grade service rifle, uh, M14 service rifle, at our station uh, for safekeeping uh, for a competitor local to us. And um, so I had always admired them, and I always thought maybe it would be a nice gun to have. Um, you know, I've, I've had much experience with the M1 Garand, fantastic, fantastic rifle with incredible heritage going through World War II and Korea and even, even sometimes in, in Vietnam uh, and co combats all over the world. Uh, but I always wanted to possibly get an M14 if I could. Well, you know, the civilian version of it, which is the M1A Springfield Armory. So I finally rectified that situation. So let's step over the bench and I'll show you what I got. Oh, now I certainly would be, I'd be telling a fib if I were to say that this is the first time I opened this up and you know, the old unboxing routine. Oh no, I've had this out. But I'm gonna get rid of this, ditch this box here and uh, Kind of a scruffy box. It's made its it's made its way uh, safely. So let's take a look at the. Uh, here's a nice uh, ballistic cloth bag, and uh, it's got it's got uh, pockets in here. One, two, three pockets for a uh, for extra magazines. I've already got my I've already got my uh, Garand strap in there. Uh, it comes with um, comes with a lock. Nothing in nothing else in that pocket. So let's take a look and see. Oh, that's a mighty fine looking rifle. Nice, uh, I like the, I like the uh, bag. It holds the rifle nice and securely, strapped down. And, you know, this has got the, this has got the uh, not legal in the California neighborhood. And uh, it's got the uh, head spacing it's got the head spacing certificate. You don't see that with commercial rifles. This is uh, something that they would do for the government to uh, indicate what the head spacing measurement was, which is actually uh, 1.631 inches. And um, it's got uh, precaution. We don't need that. In fact, I'm going to just take that off right now. Snip that off. Now this rifle's mine. I'll set that aside. Let's see what else it's uh, got before I actually take the rifle out. Nice pocket here for uh, some documents. So within this pocket, we've got a uh, Springfield Armory sticker for my windshield. I put that. I'll put that right in my my back window. I think my my uh, truck could uh, benefit by that. I think, and there's a uh, M1A Springfield Armory M1A Operations and Safety Manual, and this gives a good overview of the uh, gun and safety operation, basic disassembly, all that stuff. Let's see what we got here. Okay, we've got our 
warranty card is um, firearms ownership pledge from the bench this is a uh, article by uh, Scott A. Duff and John M. Miller and that's uh, regarding it looks like citing it in uh, basic uh, instructions on these are national match rifles that they're showing here but I'm sure that this is applicable to uh, this is certainly applicable to any uh, M1A or M14 and then we have an article here by uh, Wayne Fads and uh, regarding the uh, slam fire issue and I've you know I, th I don't know if I've addressed that issue uh, some some uh, guns are prone to slam firing and certainly any uh, any rifle uh, that has or handgun that has a floating firing pin as this rifle does uh, a floating firing pin uh, slamming forward uh, along with his bolt can shoot you right into the back of that cartridge and here is a um, TM that means technical manual 91005223-12 and this is about the uh, Six seven six two millimeter rifle M14 and rifle bipod M2. So this is a publication that came out in January of '63, and uh, certainly this is uh, this is germane to the actual M14. So this is going to have uh, information in here regarding all the uh, military cartridges that are uh, issued with it or had been issued with it at the time, and uh, it's also going to have information on. Uh, the selected selective fire operation and uh, disassembly. So uh, it's it's quite a quite a neat manual that I think it's just a little bit of uh, it's it's uh, it shows you what it shows you what Springfield Armory uh, wants to do. They want to they want to make this gun as much the military rifle that it uh, it really is based upon. So I think it's kind of cool, really cool. So I'll put this all back and we'll take a look at the gun itself. And um, I haven't yet cleaned it up or anything like that. Uh, the first thing we'll do is um, I'm going to remove that um, chamber plug. What I'll do first is I'll, I'll take out the magazine. It's a ten, it comes with a 10 round magazine. Yeah, I, you know, certainly I'd like to have a 20 round magazine and I have ordered some uh, 20 round magazines. Checkmate has a good good price on them and they're, they're all certainly uh, military spec, uh, very high grade magazines. So I've ordered a couple of uh, 20 round magazines just to have for fun. Um, ten, there's nothing wrong with a 10 round magazine. And certainly uh, to comply with so many states that is transitioning to that as a legal restriction, uh, it, it makes life a little easier for everybody, I suppose. Um, but uh, I will be putting my, I will be putting my uh, military grand style sling on it. it it absolutely has to have that so let's remove this um, chamber plug safety chamber plug and by the way I've I've, I've checked this uh, this bore is uh, uh, quite clean I I ran I ran uh, some solvent in the patch down the bore and cleaned it up really nicely uh, the receiver has got the receiver has got actually uh, some it looks like petroleum jelly uh, protecting it. Now that has to be all removed before it's uh, shot. Um, the uh, the stock is nice. Let me let me move this camera back so we can uh, show you things. So now you can get a better look, and uh, it's got the uh, standard military flash suppressor on the front. And actually, believe it or not, you know it's not mentioned in. Uh, new literature uh, or it's it's probably not widely known but uh, I was recently watching a uh, army training film uh, that dates back to when these were issued and uh, the description that was given the uh, in in the uh, movie the training movie and they show they show training movies to uh, military people at actually at uh, movie installations so there's Benny. He came down to see us. How are you doing? Huh? Oh, you good boy. Did you just come back with Mom? Huh? Did you? Yeah. You good boy. Okay, we're doing a film here. <laughs> so um, it actually, 
it actually helps reduce recoil. So uh, although it's not a, a stated feature that, uh, that this rifle has a, uh, uh, that, sort of, that sort of device, this flash suppressor actually does uh, act as a, a recoil reducer because uh, it, it depicted in the movie that the gas is striking the forward edge of this, uh, of this flash suppressor Pulls the, pulls the muzzle forward and reduces the recoil. In other words, it, it, it counteracts the recoil in much the same way that um, uh, ported barrels would do. So the, um, the rifle has a fantastic trigger. I was extremely pleased with it. Now this is a standard model. I really wanted to have a standard model because I, I wanted a standard size aperture. I did not want a target aperture. I wanted to have a better acquisition. Uh, there's, there's no, you know, I think I, I mentioned in a previous uh, video series on peep apertures that constricting an aperture does the same thing as it does by stopping down a camera lens. In other words, it increases the depth of field. So for a target shooter, what it would do is increase the depth of field so he can see both the sharp front sight at the same time that he sees uh, a sharp target. And that's, that's wonderful for, for the target shooter who's in ideal situations, you know, with a, with a white target and a black bullseye and all that stuff where you can get a better target acquisition. But for field shooting, uh, and certainly for combat use, uh, the standard aperture, I think this is a point Six seven zero seven six zero. It's 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 not a it's not a big aperture by any means. It's not a ghost ring. It's a standard military aperture, and you can you can get some exceptionally fine shooting from those. Um, the trigger is wonderful. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the standard the standard package trigger on. Uh, the standard rifle is a national match trigger. It's it's not necessarily tuned to uh, the same. It's not necessarily tuned to the same standards as a national match trigger. But I just measured this, and I'm going to show you. This this has a fantastic trigger. I was so. I was so incredibly thrilled when I saw it. Now it's got a two-stage trigger, meaning that it's going to come back. It's going to come back to a wall first. Um, it's going to come back to a uh, the first stage, which br uh, stops at a wall. So, and it retracts at three and a half pounds. So the the first stage retracts at three and a half pounds. And it breaks exactly five and a quarter pounds after after that. So this 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 trick this trigger has effectively less than a two pound trigger. Um, you know you hold you, obviously you're holding back. Uh, it's coming back with a, a five a five pound trigger, but uh, the break is beautiful. It it's it it just slides back. This is like a Geisley trigger. Um, better actually because I got it here. So it comes back. You can hear that on my microphone. You can hear that how it just comes right back to that hard dead dead wall. And any as any good military trigger should comes back, stops, and then less than two pounds later it breaks. I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled. It doesn't get any better than him. That's a clean sharp break. That's every bit of match trigger. Um, it could be reduced down to I think it's four and a half pounds uh, for for a, uh, or is it four pounds for a match competition? But you know my I don't have I don't have what you'd call a demanding trigger figure. I I I do very very well with heavy triggers, so that's no problem at all for me. Nice. Um, the, uh, it's got the it's got the flap butt plate, which was that was employed for uh, controlling full automatic fire. Um, it's got um, adjustment for windage and elevation, which is really you know just these knobs turn just so smoothly. Um, the uh, elevation adjustment is in one minute of angle clicks. 
that means one inch per hundred yards and the same thing with the windage the windage and this is this is a standard which has been uh, kept in the military ever since the M1 Garand if you go back to any 1943 1942 training films for the US military uh, you'll see that the actual way that those things were intended to operate is, is exactly the same way as this one operates uh, they carried that they carried that same standard forward so you've got a you've got a scale on the back on the back of this receiver here you've got a scale for windage and uh, your your elevation typically at 200 yards if you set your you, you start out by, by setting your uh, rear sight 10 clicks high uh, and start with that to sight in at 200 yards. And that means you can actually sight in at 100 yards knowing where your bullet strike should be at 100 and uh, do your sighting in from there. Uh, any windage adjustment, if you, you want to make sure that that scale is always centered. So any actual physical uh, zero adjustment to your windage in other words a dead calm air you make your you make your windage adjustments to this front sight by moving it in the opposite direction rear sight is always moved in the direction that you wish your bullet to, to move and front sight is moved in the opposite direction but that's where you would make your standard windage correction correction for zeroing and then you make these windage corrections for actual uh, windage uh, on the field so that's nice. Uh, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And um, here you've got a you've got a clip. Let's see if it shows up better with this light. And right here you've got a uh, a clip insertion guide that could be removed if it gets in your way. But it's kind of cool to have it there. I like it. Um, it's got the uh, standard M1 Garand style rotating bolt, but it's got the improved feature of having uh, a bolt roller on the, uh, on the uh, operating, that interacts with the operating rod. So I think what we can do is bring it over to the bench and, uh, and uh, let me just also show you, under the butt plate is a, uh, there's a two port storage compartment here for uh, cleaning implements cleaning rod, uh, brushes and patches and things like that. So, uh, and also this, this features a bolt stop, last shot bolt stop, which uh, previous, previous M1 Garand certainly didn't have because it was operated with a different uh, sort of mechanism. It was an end block eight round clip. But this one here has an actual bolt stop that uh, engages with the last shot fired on the magazine and it holds the bolt open and then subsequent to that you just release it and let it go. So let's bring it over the bench and open her up. And as you can see this is a uh, walnut version. It's got a beautiful piece of walnut. Uh, straight grained, I like that, straight grained right through the pistol grip especially. Uh, strong, it'll stay straight and uh, I may give that a buffing up. It's it's a it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit on the rough side. I mean, not physically rough, but that could stand to be uh, buffed down a little bit with some uh, fine paper. And uh, I'll be keeping it uh, just as the military would do. I'll be keeping it uh, protected with uh, raw linseed oil. So let's take her down. Give you a close look before I open her up. The lighting is good here. And uh, nice sturdy sling swivels for the uh, one and a quarter inch Garand style sling. And you can see here there's uh, the gas system. This is, uh, this is the gas piston within, within here. And it's a self-compensating gas piston which uh, improved the uh, Garand system which uh, was a little bit finicky about certain uh, certain conditions when uh, pressures changed. But, um, we're going to open it up. This is, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, these rifles. Once they're opened up many times, they'll be uh, they can be opened easily by uh, 
just pulling back on this trigger guard. Uh, this is this is quite stiff and quite resistant. So I'm going to use a piece of uh, German silver here, and uh, this is this is something I use in uh, maintaining guns. Uh, it's 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 a it's a softer than steel uh, implement made of German silver. So uh, the very first thing you want to make do, make sure you do is to um, have the bolt home and just insert this tool. You can also use a uh, you can also use a screwdriver carefully and just disengage that. Once you've disengaged it, you can pull straight around and then straight up. It releases from this track. On the other side here, you'll be able to see there's a there's a track right here. That'll be greased a little bit so that that'll slide out a little bit easier. Uh, but that's all you have to do is just slide that straight up. And it's got a Garand style trigger mechanism. Absolutely beautiful uh, trigger, trigger mechanism. And the way this the way this functions is it's got uh, the sear has got there's the front of the sear and then it's got a tail. And so when you pull the trigger back, you can see the you can see the first stage. The first stage comes to the point where the tail uh, contacts the rear of the hammer. And then when you continue to pull it, it pushes it off of the front sear. Very, very nice arrangement. So we'll leave and never never allow these any any gun, never allow the hammer to fall uh, on the uh, front because that, that can certainly break things. Now, you just simply lift straight up. If you have a national match or, or a, uh, any rifle which has been glass bedded, this is not glass bedded, this is a standard, standard grade issue style, but this just lifts straight up and backs away. Nice system, but if you have one that's national match, you do not want to be taking it down and field stripping it un unless you absolutely have to. If, if, if you're in inclement weather or something and you have to get it open to clean it up and dry it, but normally you would just leave it together because uh, every time you open it up, you're going to be uh, impacting the uh, tightness of that uh, bedding between the receiver and the stock. But uh, you can see the you can see the receiver liner the. The, the, the stock liner that uh, mates with the receiver, uh, nicely milled. A lot of fine workmanship here, a lot of nice milling. This is, this is military grade all the way. So we'll set that aside. And here we've got the, uh, we've got the, the receiver is uh, all, like I say, all greased up. That's a, that's a white grease. It, it looks very much to me like just plain, uh, Petroleum jelly, which is very effective for uh, for uh, pre preserving things like this. Now, to okay, you want to pull the spring firmly forward until it relieves the pressure on this part of the spring guide, and then pop this roll pin straight out, and that disengages the spring guide very carefully. Feed that out of a tube because, uh, and you should be wearing glasses right now. This spring can whip around and take your eye out. Uh, anytime you're really working on uh, tools of any kind, you should have uh, protective eyewear on. So there's your spring spring guide, and it's been uh, it's been lubed at the factory for uh, primary lube, uh, just a protection. And um, now, what we want to do now is remove our operating rod. To remove the operating rod, just simply bring it straight back and when it gets to the point there's a there's a hole right here you want to place inside you can see basically right inside that operating rod there's a tail. That tail has to engage with that milled uh, circle, that hole, and you want to bring it straight back. When it gets to that point you want to lift it out and away from the roller guide on the bolt and then straight down and it just drops away. That's all you have to do. Adjust. It just drops straight out of the guide up front. So now that we've got that, now that we've got that out, you can see this is the uh, operating rod nicely milled, beautifully machined, nice. 
The bolt sh should come out very easily. Just slide, grab, grab hold of the uh, roller guide, come forward, and then as soon as it as soon as it wants to come free on this opposite bolt lug, you want to just slide forward approximately 45 degrees. Just lift it out. That's all you have to do. It's it's very simple. The um, firing pin tail is gonna is gonna catch on the inside of the that cross bar on the receiver. But other than that, uh, it just drops right in. Very, very simple. I don't know why people have such a hard time with that. It's, it's, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just pull it straight back up at a 45 degree angle and just take it right out. All there is to it. Never ever take these apart. Uh, this, this requires a special uh, tool to get that, to get that uh, extractor out and uh, it's, it's entirely uh, unnecessary. This will clean up 100% with just solvent, and uh, this roller guide here was an improvement over the Garand. This, this roller guide uh, makes operation much, much uh, smoother and uh, provides longer life for the rifle. So there's your basic disassembly. You don't need to go any further than that. And um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, clean this all up Get it all greased up, and uh, we'll take a look at the. Uh, this has got a tappet style. This has got a tappet style gas system. Actually, not much different than the style of tappet that was used in the M1 carbine. It's it's a much much larger uh, much larger one, but it's it's uh, works on the same idea. In other words, it's a short stroke. Uh, it 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 just. Uh, Taps that it taps that operating rod and just drives that straight back. So very neat system. So let me get this uh, rifle back together. I can do it on camera. Very simple. So hopefully the biggest problem is getting that getting that spring back in. But um, we'll tip it back over, get the bolt back in. I will um, I will. Uh, endeavor to uh, degrease it off camera. I just want to get that tail, there we go, get that tail of the uh, firing pin out of the way. Now you want to make sure you open this, open this bolt up, bring it back. You'll probably make a liar out of me, it's going to make it hard. You want to engage the, you want to engage the slot right here with the bolt roller. That bolt roller is also going to receive a uh, uh, grease and you can injection you can inject grease into that bolt roller so that uh, it basically is it's like a wheel bearing uh, so what you want to do is is up front have make make sure you're to the rear of that that hole the guide come straight up and engage that engage that roller that's all there is to it so it's, it's more a matter of making sure that tail goes in first before you start anything else. Now here's the big one, getting that, getting that spring in. So you want to feed it in, make sure you're wearing those glasses. And this, this angle tail, the angle goes up. I'm going to have to, uh, and make sure, that, make sure that your catch is slid all the way out. So make sure you have that. Make sure you have that uh, that catch. That catch has to be loose. So apply pressure forward on that spring and guide as you slide that catch home. We're home. Just a matter of putting the uh, putting the stock back on and drop it in. Drop it in at the front right here. You see that and. Slider straight down. Reinserting the uh, trigger guard and trigger mechanism is a matter of making sure you have your have your hammer to the rear and the safety on. You want to have that safety on, and then drop the. You want to drop this tail right here. This 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 has to align with a groove, which is. Can you see it? 
and you see this slot right here, that's where that, see if I can point it out with the screwdriver, this slot right here is what has to receive that, that engagement. Do this again so you can see. And uh, if you just watch where that slot is engaging, you'll be in business. There we go. I was trying to see with the light on the wrong side. So that's it. Once it just drop, it drops right down into place, and depress your trigger guard. And you want to give it a operation. To make sure she's functioning. That's it. Of course, it's not complete until you've installed the M1 Garand sling. I'm going to enjoy shooting this. Something I've been waiting a long time to get, and uh, you know, when you're younger, you just don't have that kind of uh, you don't have that kind of cash to blow on things like this because this you're talking you're talking about a uh, a rifle that lists price for about eighteen hundred dollars. You can get them for a little over sixteen hundred, uh, but still, it's quite an investment, and uh, but a lot of a lot of fun. A lot of uh, a lot of good shooting ahead with this. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and God bless.